what's in your mind For you and for I I'm trying to decide I'm looking in your eyes, yeah, yeah I mean my signs, but your feelings inside you I'm pushing up my mind and my spirit, babe Boom! We're back. This is episode number 48. I was just talking to Ryan. We just got in one year on this podcast. Crazy. Which is crazy. We were reminiscing about it. And today we got a really special episode. We're actually in Arizona. This is kind of our first little transplant episode. Many more to come. You know what I'm saying? But we got a really good guest on here. But before we get to that, let me get you guys to tap in on this. This is a podcast about entrepreneurship, work ethic, self-development, and becoming the best version of yourself. You're joined by your two lovely hosts. I'm one of them. My name is Jacob Moore. I'm the other, Ryan Ramirez. Yeah, Jacob Moore and Ryan Ramirez in the building. We are an artist and artist manager duo. I'm the artist manager, Ryan's the artist. And we're telling you guys about the ups and downs of the successes and failure, failures, the entrepreneurship, the hustle, the good and bad, and everything as we traverse this music industry. Music industry. And today we got a guy on who, a man on, who is just unbelievable. I, I connected with him on Instagram and I kind of, I was peeping your stuff. I was like, hey man, what, you know, what's going on? I've been peeping your stuff, whatever. And I, I did a bunch more digging and I think I'm just a huge fan of from, from what I've seen. And this is only on the surface, but I think that we're going to get a lot of good stuff, you know, out of this guy about his hustle, his work ethic, his intelligence when it comes to the industry. Already he came in, the vibe was so good. Mm -hmm you know, holds multiple titles, music manager, uh, production manager, working with Sean Healy and a bunch of other things. So I know we're going to get a ton of value out of this upcoming artists, entrepreneurs, everyone, please welcome the man. This is Tony. Hey, what's good, everybody? What's up, brother? How you guys doing? <laughs> Pretty good, hey, bro. How you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah. I'm doing well. Thank cool. you for having me. Absolutely, bro. Thank yes. you for coming, man. So <clears throat> we first connected on Instagram and I saw that you were from Phoenix. And so for everybody listening, my brother's from Phoenix. And then you were telling me, so born and raised here. Born and raised in Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. What, like what part, what's kind of the, the story with that? So I grew up all over, you know, my childhood was very fast moving sure. and it's probably helped me at, at this stage in my life. But, um, yeah. you know, I, I've, I've kind of grew up all over Phoenix, some mm -hmm. of the smaller suburbs down in the city, you know, really I, I've, I've trekked all around Phoenix and its surrounding areas. Cool. So, you know, this place inside and out inside and out <clears throat> so when you were growing up was <clears throat> excuse me was there a big music presence in, within your family or your house or how did you discover that that first step so uh no you know i always kind of am amazed myself about how i got to music but you know what i can say is i've always been a real fan of music and my older brother who uh was a big influence to my life was uh you know, these guys, him and my cousin would just sit every weekend and play music and, you know, mm -hmm. drink and have a good time. And as a yeah. kid growing up watching these good times, mm -hmm. you know, it was just kind of uh, influence to me. And, you know, I just always mm -hmm. loved music. And it was never just one genre of music. It was just a wide variety of music. Mm -hmm. So, gotcha. yeah. What's kind of your first memory with music? Was there ever a song where you were like, okay, wait a minute, this, this song made me feel some type of way? Or what was that? So... I you know, I think for me, I have what I call moods for music. And so this is where I think my experience with music comes from just, you know, music has the ability, I think, to kind of take you different places and, and sure. you know, different music and is for different mu moods. And mm. so I just always felt like different types of music when I would hear it, you know, it would almost be like the right time. And mm -hmm. so you get these just... Mm -hmm you know, different influences of music. I can't say there was one moment because mm -hmm. I can remember so many. That's cool, bro. Yeah. That's really cool. I kind of grew up, which is cool that we're talking about this on air too, because we haven't really been able to like connect and like know more about each other. So, you know, aside from like digging into your career and stuff like that, right. it's, it's cool to vibe on that. And I feel kind of similar in that way where like my brother, we're at his house right now, right? <laughs> in front of his house. We're inside the RV and, um, like he was a huge influence on me. Like he, he played in bands, same thing. He would have his friends come over. They were probably drinking and didn't tell me because I was a little brother. You know what I mean? Right. And my dad is a musician too. And, and I never had this one profound like, oh man, boom, the light switches on. I love music. It was just like, it was like always there. Right. There was always a mood. There, there's these songs, like some Chili Peppers I listen to. And I think of growing up. Yeah. there's some Lincoln Park I listened to and I remember walking through sixth grade just pissed yeah. you know what I mean and so it was kind of always this like background like mosaic behind yeah. me like as I went through life and stuff right. and I feel like and you know with your role as a music manager and, and as mine too that is is huge yeah you know what I mean because it's always present do you remember the first time you got like chills 
for music because for me it was like I remember I was a huge Michael Jackson fan growing oh, up yeah. like dancing around the house and stuff and uh, Free Willy was like a, a movie I loved as a kid yeah. and at the end credits it was a song called Will You Be There by Michael yeah. Jackson bro I remember getting chills oh, shit, getting chills as like a kid and like getting emotional so I was like I, I distinctly remember that I was like I was like the turning point of like I think I want to do music like wow. in my life so do you, wow. do you have like a moment like that? so um, you know I grew up in a different era of music some of the same artists though you mm-hmm. know uh, but I would say probably you know you go back to listening to Michael Jackson's Thriller in the mm-hmm. 80s and that yeah. was like those songs and the way they made those records was just so powerful mm-hmm. you know and if I had to think back I remember playing I'm probably telling my age here but I, I remember playing Michael Jackson on record mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. an actual record and having to listen to it on record mm-hmm. and so you know A the sound of record music and the sound of digital music is very different that's why when you record you know in studios if you have are are recording on tapes it's just such a different sound of music and everything is digital these days but you know i would say probably going back to like michael jackson's thriller Mm -hmm. you know i I, because that as a young guy i remember was one of the first probably albums and um influences i had to music Mm -hmm. that's the so i wanted to ask you this too like do you feel like because michael jackson is a timeless generational artist like forever yeah right do you think um now with like social media and the way the industry works different that there will ever be like a timeless classic that level of superstardom or do you think there's too much access now to like have that not have that magic you know in an artist you know what i mean you know so i do feel like there are those artists you know even in current times your digital times you know and and People will probably not give them their kudos until they're gone because that's Mm. how it happens. But, you know, you look at an artist like Chris Brown who has had longevity, has hits, Mm. you know, has had a real successful life. Now, his life has had some bumps, which really I don't know of anybody's life who hasn't had bumps, Mm -hmm. you know. And that doesn't matter if you grew up with or without, you know, even people with go through issues and problems. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, the, the the problem with the world is I think uh, people forget that everybody goes through things. And it yeah. may not be the same things, but you never know what people go through. Yeah, yeah. You know? I got a lot of stuff to ask you about the music industry of huh. today. Now, before we get into that, though, I want to ask you. So what, if you could just explain to all the listeners, what is, you know, a day-to-day like for you? What's a day in the life of Tony? What are your roles? Who are you working with? And, and what are you doing? So um, without getting too much into the artists, I sure. can't really, you mm-hmm. know, do that in, uh, to a certain sense. But there are some, you know, really well-rounded, um, successful artists that I've been blessed enough to kind of be in an inner circle with you know and, and they're in the process of really building out some some great projects and i've been able to spend some years you know we were talking about a, a latin artist that i've spent some time working around mm-hmm. he had some success you know recently mm-hmm. on a show and becoming a finalist on a show and really mm-hmm. getting to uh, another level um yeah. but a day-to-day you know for me is uh you know as a father as a you know entrepreneur as a a businessman who has other businesses outside of just you know the music business that Mm -hmm. i've done um it's just trying to manage some of these things you know uh, i'm currently working on tour dates for an artist and that's Mm -hmm. you know been something we've been working on for a couple weeks for an artist who has you know had some success in music and who Mm -hmm. um was signed for some time to probably a, a, a artists that a lot of people would know of and so Mm -hmm. you know a lot of my recent days have been spent trying to plan a tour Mm -hmm. in different cities and you know trying to connect with these individuals to get this tour locked in and you know figure out what we need yeah when did you first start working in the music industry oddly enough probably 10 plus years ago Mm -hmm. um and it was to a different capacity working in music you know how i started in music was by driving artists and that's where you know i really kind of connected with artists and you know i was having a conversation with a friend of mine and you know we were talking about my time was spent around artists and so i learned a lot about artists uh at a level of artists that was already in the industry you know i started out in the industry of music i didn't really go through a grind to want to get in music i just fell into it Mm -hmm. that is so cool yeah I feel like that's um that's very interesting because us I think we're kind of the opposite like we're very like grind like 
we we we've we've been working together for like three years. We've known mm-hmm. each other forever. We right. can get into that later. But yeah. like three years of like I'm your manager. Let's go. Right. Um, and never really had any like industry connections like that. Just kind of doing what we could, developing, trying, failing, getting yeah. back up. Um, and I I value that a lot personally because I really I think it creates a hunger that like once you kind of get successful in the future. You, you won't get comfortable like because i know yeah. like once shit starts really going i'm gonna be still be hungry for more because i knew what that feeling was of not getting mm-hmm. it for a long time mm-hmm. right. so um that's interesting though to have different you know starting points or whatever right. so it's always interesting to hear different people where they start yeah what what do you think in terms of artist development how how crucial is it for an artist to go through that grind like because i have some people that say oh man, if an artist didn't go through that, that hustle, that grind, eating the shit, you know what I mean? And all that stuff, like, then they're never going to appreciate or whatever. But I'm like, I think there are some artists who may have gotten started on a, you know, like a better level than others. And they're still very grateful about their career and stuff. So, you know, do you think like, um, it's really important for artists to like care about that grind? (sighs) I think it is imperative for an artist to care about the grind because the grind is what's really going to take you where you want to go. You know, that's how I see it. I don't think you can shortcut any part of this business industry. You know, I think you'll, you find people with talent and you're like, okay, those people are going to be successful um, because of the talent. Mm -hmm. But even in that, there's still a grind to it, you know, and I always say the music business is 80% business and 20% music you know Mm. truthfully and once you understand the business and what it takes to make industry level music Mm -hmm. and to really treat it as a job Mm -hmm. that's when it changes Mm. yeah you know yeah now how did you did did you ever have a time because i think that that i definitely went through this ryan i think he's been pretty set in stone on being an artist for a very long time and i before i really became ultra passionate about music and i was like this is what i'm gonna do i think i kind of struggled with like you know I felt like I really valued my work ethic and, and discipline and, and I felt like whatever I was going to do, I would be successful in. Yeah. Because of that, it was hard for me to choose, you know, and mm-hmm. Ryan, like the first year of his career would be calling me like, hey, we got to jump on this. And then like I'm in school for business and my friend's trying to have like a startup and have me in it. I'm like, oh, but I could be successful in that too. Oh my gosh. You know, did because you said you have multiple businesses. I do. do you ever feel that? I still feel that, you know, yeah. I think you yeah. always, <sighs> people like us entrepreneurs people that really take a bet on themselves Mm -hmm. always have that you know you always have this kind of lingering am i making the right decision you know Mm -hmm. uh should i be doing something else you know should i be doing this or this opportunity presented itself you know and as you get older you know other things start to kind of take place of that Mm -hmm. you said your brother just had a kid you know so that now becomes a focus so now not only do you you know say you have a passion for music which you said he played in the band Mm -hmm. um you know, I'm sure a lot of that gets shelved now that you have a kid. You yeah. probably ain't going to be practicing in the garage at the house, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, life starts to try and take that over. Not try to, but it, it does at times. And so, you know, how hungry are you for it, you know? Mm-hmm. And also, how much do you want to sacrifice for it until you get it? You know, some people sacrifice and wait their whole lives. Some mm-hmm. people get it, you know, just by opportunity. Mm-hmm. But even in that, you never know what they went through to get it. Yeah. You wow. Know? In music, how quickly does the game change? Oh, man, fast. You know, you look at, I I think the attention to music is a lot shorter now than it was back then. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. people are kind of what's hot now, what's not. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with social media and the uh, amount of information that people have at their disposal. You know, they're so ready to focus on the next thing because that's just what's there. You know, every day you look at something new unless you're, you know... Mm -hmm. looking at the same stuff which can happen too yeah Mm -hmm. so even though the game changes quickly and we're really we're realizing that too you know stuff we thought a year ago we figured it out bro we wake up a couple months later (laughs) we're like shit (laughs) time to come up with a new plan right you know um even though the game constantly changes what are kind of like some fundamentals that you could give to upcoming artists who are listening to this like hey these are the things that you should focus on in terms of artist development or you know work ethic or anything like that um you know, presentation. And uh, I have this saying, you know, I can make a $1,000 look like $10,000. Hmm. And that's a talent. That's having the knowledge of resources, you know, being able to take that same $100 and, you know, okay, well, I'm going to divide it to this. And knowing 
how to go get what you need and the quality yeah. of what you need. And, you know, I think a lot of that boils down to the team. Who do you, you know, you were lucky enough to have a friend in this before it became music. And mm-hmm. that's probably why you guys will last in something like this, you know. Um, this is a very untrustworthy business. Mm-hmm. And you've yeah. learned that. You know, I had a situation today yeah. with an individual who is just a very untrustworthy, uh, untrustworthy worthy person, you know. Mm-hmm. And so you find a lot of that in the industry. You find a lot of opportunists. Um, what's the saying? Hopefully your opportunity survives the opportunists. So, mm. um, you know, you, you have a good team of people around you. You know, you, you try to remain grounded and focused on what you want to do regardless mm-hmm. of what's happening around you mm-hmm. it's interesting how much we've had to use like gut feelings like with Man. people and stuff like you have to have that Man. and you know what and a lot of times too um we had opportunities and stuff but i i would have that bad gut feeling about it but logically this makes sense we should do it right, right. like yeah. we should everything they're saying sounds correct like it sounds like this is going to be the right way to go but there's something about it that's like I don't know. Like, yeah. why is it when I feel with you or our creative director we work with, et cetera, why, do, why does it feel natural? Like, why does it feel like it's right? Maybe we have work to do, but why does it feel right? And with them, it feels like, I don't know. I feel like, you know what I mean? The gut yeah. feeling radar has definitely has to be there. What do, what do you think about that? I think that's huge. And having that sixth sense or that internal instinct that kind of mm-hmm. navig- helps you to navigate this stuff. And, and you have to, you know, I always say, and I learned it a long time ago, Always listen to your gut, mm-hmm. period. Because gotcha. your your gut and your intuition is not going to lie to you. Yeah, The world and the people in it will lie to you. Mm-hmm. But your gut and intuition is always going to tell you. And if, if it feels wrong, it probably is. You know, yeah. all money isn't good money. Damn. Oh, damn. Yeah. You know? That, I, that was a big thing that, like, I think we struggled with, you know, because we had opportunities with, like, labels approaching us and different people approaching us to work. And, of course, like, I, I as the manager, I'm like, this is what we need. Like, this is what we got to do, yeah. you know? <laughs> and so I've, I've definitely learned to uh, assess situations a lot better, like, with experience and stuff like that. But, I mean, you know, like, <laughs> earlier in his career, I would be like, well, we need money. We need an investment. We, mm-hmm. need, we need development, blah, blah, blah. He, like, here they are. And then he would say, well, listen, dude, like my gut, you know, this and that. And then Sticks, our creative director, who's also a mentor to us and a veteran in the industry. I'm very thankful to work with him. Right. You know, I, I've learned as the manager, like, I really got to value like what my teammates say, because that's huge. Because I think as a manager, I've had a lot of people put in my head, like, you're the manager, bro. Yeah. You manage the career. You know, you, you got to tell the artist, even if they might feel a certain way. And it's like, to a degree, I think that's right. But man, like if I never said, okay, Ryan, you're right, bro. I think I could have gotten us into a lot of bad stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I listened to Ryan and I listened to Sticks, and there's been situations with different combinations of that, you know, but that's like the biggest thing I'm learning is trust your team. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to have the right team and you yeah. got to have a team that's willing to tell you sometimes or at least give you another perspective of it, mm-hmm. you know? And I've always said, I don't manage the people. I manage the process. The people manage themselves. Mm. You know, truthfully, you can't like, although you guys probably have a good dynamic, you know, you can't make him do anything. Yeah. Yeah. The artist has to want it. You got to want it. (laughs) Right. So if he's like, nah, I'm not doing that. He's just not going to do it, you know, and then it became, you know, becomes a rift and oh, well, you know. Um, And so I think that dynamic is important, you know, having somebody that you trust on the other side of you um, Mm -hmm. is huge. You know, Mm, I think that's huge. When did you kind of like who? you know, m- maybe not who, but like, when did you feel you had that connection with someone in the industry and you went, okay, okay, this is a good teammate. So, you know, because I'm me, that hasn't happened a lot, you know, because I have that kind of sixth sense mm-hmm. intuition. And, and mm-hmm. to me, you know, I, I've always worked and gotten myself to where I needed to go. I've never really, you know, again, I fell into music. It yeah. wasn't something that I went to school for, you know. It was something that just arose out of opportunity and mm-hmm. me being willing to seize these different opportunities, you know, and, and just kind of see where it took me. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've worked for Sean for 10 plus years now. Mm-hmm. I've worked for We Book Bands for 10 plus years, but mm-hmm. the first four or five years, all I did was drive artists for Sean. And that was because I, you know, came from a whole nother environment. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it was through that though that i built the relationship with sean you know uh i built a trust with sean and and i remember one day in 2015 i get this call um you know and i had been on the road some with with another artist who uh had a a real 
kind of successful beginning and hopes to have a pretty big ending. But um, I had been on the road and I had kind of learned a different dynamic. You know, it went from me driving artists to me kind of being out on the road and seeing how some of this stuff operates and having mm-hmm. been around all these artists for all these years, you mm-hmm. know, and, and these were again, industry level artists already doing, you know, what a lot of people want to do. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. And so, you know, that was just kind of where it stemmed. And then Sean gave me an opportunity to work mm-hmm. production, you know, for a show. And that was kind of where that was born. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now here I am. Yeah. Can you describe what production is? Because even for me, I was kind of like, you know, is that on site at the tour doing that or is it kind of off site? Like what's what's just a basic summary of that? So your production manager in the capacity of working with Sean Healy is, you know, you show up to the show early, um, get everything set up. You know, you're working with uh, the artists, you know, getting their sound checks, making sure they have what they need, Um, you know, just being. A resource, Mm -hmm. you know, at a show the day of. You're doing final counts on shows. You're making sure, you know, people have a good time. You're kind of managing sound. You're Mm -hmm. managing hospitality. You're managing people, you know. It it, it has so many different roles. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how does that differ from a tour manager? A tour manager more, you know, functions on the road in different cities. So this person is the person that checks in with your... Mm -hmm production managers at shows they're the person okay. that is going to kind of manage hotels and yeah. just your day-to-day activities on on the road making sure people are where they're supposed yeah. to be when they're supposed to be there yeah. how much did covid change the industry for <laughs> you guys <laughs> yeah you know shows i remember there was a it was february of 2020 when this all kind of began you know you heard it a little bit prior uh you heard some news stories you know but it wasn't real prevalent like it got and so we were supposed to do a young ma show out here it was really going to be a sold out you know her tour was moving um it was probably like a week before that show february i think 19th was that show yeah and then you kind of get these started cancellations of shows and so that was where you kind of was like okay you know as long as i've been in this environment never has happened i mean you would cancel shows because of you know maybe an artist not showing up or other reasons but you know, to have a whole just slew of shows go yeah. crazy. Blank. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> now, like what what exactly went through your head? You see so you start seeing one show, you're like, okay, one show, and then you see a couple and like is that you and you and Sean or your other teammates sit down, and you say, Okay, it's time to go into go mode. So you know, sh- you know I I've always just worked kind of at a capacity in, in Phoenix for Sean, you okay. know. I, so I've just kind of taken the lead from the office as far as as the shows you know they i don't think anybody knew what was going to be i don't think anybody could have predicted what happened you know and so i think a lot of it was speculation you know you were being provided different information in different areas so you didn't really know and so you know initially i'm thinking okay they're canceling a couple of shows they were saying like three weeks and we'll be back to normal yeah here we are almost two years later wow crazy a year and a half later (laughs) yeah now one thing I mean, that obviously made it hard for everybody, right? Yes. And and I think even now we're kind of seeing like different stuff coming up with, with COVID and, right. and there could be some uncertainty and stuff like that. Now, I try to talk to a lot of upcoming artists just to see what's going through their mind, you know? And I went through a sh- I went to a show the other day at the Viper Room. Nice. I was talking to this band that I've been following and stuff. I was just like, hey, I'm a fan. Like, just want to say what's up to you guys, you know? And I was like asking them questions about their career and stuff like that. And one thing they were telling me is they were like, one of the most difficult things has has been touring and they felt like that was a roadblock for them not even just because of covid but they felt like they didn't have a starting point they were like okay we like do we do pay to play shows okay but we can't sell tickets okay well where do you get a show where someone will put you on and in their mind they were like that does not exist you know (laughs) how, how do you open up for this big band or something like that you know is there kind of like any structure to that for upcoming artists there are Okay. Uh, and, and I think, you know, it just depends. Um, some of these guys do pay to play. A lot of uh-huh. them in the beginning yeah. pay to play. You know, it's just how kind of the industry at that level that I've kind of learned is set up. Now, mm-hmm. you know, unless you have a big artist with a big budget and, you know, they just kind of mm-hmm. come into it like that, which I, I don't really know of too many people that have. I'm sure they exist, but I don't know them. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you have to, again, this is where the grind comes in. And mm-hmm. what are what are you really 
willing to do, you know, to get you to where you want to go. I, I think a pay to play is, you know, although it's not a concept that you think of as, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, you're paying for marketing. You're paying for mm -hmm. the ability mm -hmm. to be seen. You're paying for the ability to be kind of recognized. And hopefully in those moments that you've paid for, you're doing enough to connect with your fans and you're, you know, taking mm -hmm. pictures and, and, and signing autographs. And, you know, I, I've seen some high level artists at that level i you know i i, I used kendrick lamar for example mm -hmm. i was one of the probably first people that worked with him on his like first tour mm -hmm. as an artist mm -hmm. and i was lucky enough to see through the years the progression yeah from this kid and you know it it was always it always to me fell back to the first show i ever saw him in and, and the reason it did is because this young man connected with fans mm -hmm. you know he rocked this show and then after he's taking pictures and staying mm -hmm. and you know just giving high fives mm -hmm. and, and and of course covid has changed that but i mean I, I do concerts even now and you still see that happen yeah yeah for sure man so are you for pay to play are you referring more to like pay to pay to play to get on with somebody else's show and like with that with an audience already there or like pay to play like try to sell my own tickets for my own show like or both both there's oh, there's okay. two ways you can do it you know there, there's a way you can you know and, and it boils down to doing your research you mm -hmm. know finding out who's doing shows in in this city you know if, if this is a promoter that you've seen you know lucky enough sean does shows in phoenix in la in chicago and mm -hmm. seattle and portland you know he has a network because he's been in this for 25 you know plus years yeah. i'm going to sean's 25th anniversary party september 25th we'll see you there bro uh, Nice. You got tickets. Nice. <laughs> so yeah. I'll see you guys there. Yeah, sure. um, so, you know, I, and, and I've worked with Sean 10 plus years, mm -hmm. you know, so I've seen a lot of these, you know, different artists over the years. And Sean yeah. is responsible for putting a lot of people on the road, that's you know, cool. and being a part of those tours yeah. early. Yeah, wow. That, that, that's insane, man. And I, <clears throat> I think that you just can't, you know, give that up. Like I it, and let me explain. I think a lot of artists now, and even I was like this to an extent, w where you can make money on the internet. We don't even have to leave our garage. You know, yeah. we can we can stream on Twitch. I love all of that. There's so many easier ways to make money nowadays and use the internet uh -huh. and like be resourceful like that. You know, but you skip out on like you said, you're you're skipping out on this face to face interaction. Experience. You're not marketing yourself. It's a different experience. Like when I so this this band that I went and saw, it's this all female band. They're badass dude and i went there i was intimidated by them bro <laughs> they were wearing doc martens they were rocking out and it was like i felt like i knew them from social media i was blown away when i saw them yeah. and then I, and then i talked to them on top of that and i just saw them in a completely different light and then like i call ryan i was after i'm driving home like yo i just met this band you know what i'm saying and like that experience like that's what we have to give to people man and that's so it. that's kind of changed up my attitude because i'm a real analytical i love spreadsheets i love yeah. i love instagram all that you know but ryan and sticks have have always been a little more kind of on the um the side of like hey this needs to be an experience for people like how can we deliver that Truth. and i value the crap out of that now Truth. And, you know? and they're right and you're right and they're right yeah and so how do you merge that yeah you know how do you merge that and that's the fine line you know how do you collectively merge those things and make sure that we're you know still touching the fans and, and and meeting the people you know but making sure that we're you know conducting this all within a certain kind of parameter and, and following a, a timeline and a budget making sure you manage that process you know but making sure you manage you know the love that people feel and that's mm -hmm. kind of how it works you know you are responsible for that the kobe bryant's of their lane Damn. that's awesome yeah and i'm not even a big kobe bryant fan you know rest his soul but the you know the mentality yeah the mamba mentality mm -hmm. that's that's like me with um michael jordan i'm not a basketball fan like that <laughs> but i'd be stunned the shit out of him because <laughs> i'm just like yeah, the mentality you know what i'm saying like we have a book of um his coach tim grover like he right. wrote a book, mindset type book about how, how he trained michael and uh, i'm just we're just obsessed with that's that like, kind that's of like shit, our man. bible bro <laughs> <laughs> we don't even watch basketball yeah, like yeah. that yeah bro My, but, mindset is huge in this yeah. industry you know being able to weather these storms and yeah. being resilient enough and being willing to fight when these people tell you no because mm -hmm. they're gonna tell you no yeah. You know, they're going to tell you that you're crazy. They're going to tell you that you'll never do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of all of it, those are the people you're hoping to prove wrong. Mm. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, I think there's there's a little, 
I'm, a, I'm the little brother. I'm the youngest in the family. Um, and that little brother exists yeah. always, you know? And, and even with Ryan and Sticks, like, like to a degree, I want to prove them wrong. With right. I want to say, you know, I want to be able to prove my ideas and do that stuff. And obviously in the most respectful, ethical way, yeah. you know, but like that, that does live within me. Like, and I, and I know it lives within Ryan too. We, right. you, you've always got this thing. It's like, what kind of drives you? And, you know, when I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, I hit a dead end. I can't book this show or this social media strategy isn't working out, whatever, whatever. I'm like, it's in there. Yeah. I, I will figure it out, you know, and it just takes <laughs> all that up and down, <laughs> you know, that's, that's exactly, it's just, you got to pivot. You got to see yeah. something, you know, and, and I, I'm an analytical person too. Mm-hmm. And, and so I say, you know, I always look at things and problems, especially, and I mm-hmm. try to break those problems down now into pieces. If I see a problem, okay, how do I solve that problem? Mm-hmm. Cause I never really sit and stare at the problem too long. Mm-hmm. If you do, you get stuck in the problem. So I look at yeah. the problem and I say, okay, how are we going to solve this problem? What ways, what resources, what avenues, how can I resolve this? And, yeah. you know, I, I, I spoke to somebody, you know, not too long ago and they said, you have three ways that you can deal with stuff. Mm-hmm. You can um, decide if you can accept it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, you can ex- if you cannot accept it, then you have to see if you can change it. And if you can't change it, you just have to let it go. You know, sometimes you have to let things go. Hmm. You know, as much as you're like, ah, sometimes you got to move on, chalk your losses and move on to something else, or you stay stuck in the problem too long. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, that's interesting. Your paralysis of analysis, right? That's what they call it. There it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get stuck, like, you know, and, and, and it's just, I think a lot of, for people, it's just not knowing what to do next, mm-hmm. but that's why you got to go find out. Yeah. Research, you yeah. know. Look at how other people failed in this. You know, do enough research. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to... and that's what that's really what this podcast is mainly about. Because at this level, we know like it's, you know, I, I still have thoughts of like why are we talking about mindset when we haven't really really got to a certain level yet. Yeah. But I see this podcast as more of like a a future type thing to where it's like once shit really starts going and you know things start getting really getting successful the way we want. Right. I want that next kid who's hungry to mm-hmm. have a a guideline of. All the mindset, the people yeah. we brought on, our fuck ups, what we thought <laughs> yeah. was right, but we changed. Right. And I want that blueprint for the next kid because right. I was that kid who was like looking for interviews, scouring interviews, my yeah. favorite artists, like trying to figure out what they did. And, and I feel right. like a lot of times they would say things like, you know, I, I just got the call and yeah. it just happened. But it's like all the, all the in-betweens and it makes you feel like it's unattainable. But I wanted to have that blueprint for the right. next kid, you know. Yeah. Right. And, and it is attainable to yeah. any and everybody. And I always say... You know, even for myself, I, I'm not where I hope to be, and I don't know if I ever will be. Mm-hmm. I just don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but what can I, you know, what I can't say is, is you know, I'm always going to keep moving in the direction. You know, it's like that northern light. Once you see the northern light, you just keep going. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I was thinking about something that you said earlier, how you said uh, music's 80% business, 20% music. True. We talked a little bit about money and stuff like that. Excuse me. Ryan totally told me, schooled me couple years ago (laughs) and he said scared money don't make money never and as the business guy i'm checking my credit score every day i'm doing stuff like that you know i'm I'm, (laughs) I'm thinking about my checking account and how we're going to maximize this roi and stuff yeah and then i realized that i wasn't even putting in like well we weren't even putting in like the the financial stuff necessary to to make his career pop and then so I studied entrepreneurship in school mm-hmm. and that's when things kind of changed for me because I started saying, okay, how can I apply the fundamentals of a startup and yeah. all of that stuff about money, money is the lifeblood of the business, all that. And I said, okay, music is, is very unique, but it can't be that different. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, one thing we can do is we can use our money in the best way possible. Right. And that's when we really sat down and I kind of came up with like an advertising strategy and we talked about like, how can we use this money in the best way possible. You know, we both still work day jobs, you know? And so we're like, we put a piece of that, a piece of that pie out to the side. And I've realized how important that is (laughs) because another thing too, when you lose a little bit of money and you don't get it back, it makes you 10 times hungrier, bro. Cause you could have spent that on something else or you could have gotten your return. And it's like, but, um, I feel like I'm just meeting a lot of artists who are like, you know, I, I don't think they purposely do this, but it's just maybe they haven't realized and we had to, it was kind of a harsh reality that like, this is a business. You need to put money into this. There will yes. be an ROI and there will be spreadsheets and it's more than you just kind of sitting at home making a record and then, oh my God, a million streams. Right. Well, even if you get a million streams, okay, you, you got a two or three grand, but like, did you gain fans? What's the right. longevity of the career? You know? And 
<laughs> yeah. And, and that's been a big thing for me too, is, is longevity. Mm -hmm. And so that's why like mm -hmm. a huge focus that uh, sticks our creative director, he put into me, he said, Jacob, Instagram's great, but you need to be out at networking events. You need to be talking to people. Yep. You need to meet up with Tony, you know, and that's why like, <laughs> dude, like, and I gotta yeah. say, man, I, I'm, so grateful for you being yeah, here, bro. I appreciate like, you guys you, having me. You, you know? and Devin, you guys are both seriously so cool. The vibe right when you yeah. came in, I was like, these guys are so cool, and yeah. and you're obviously so intelligent, man. And I'm I'm just trying to be a sponge that. right now. Yeah. yeah, you know. But um, yeah, man. I'm really not that cool. I mean, my, my <laughs> kids would probably be like, nah, he's not that cool. It's the um, energy when you walk yeah, in. Yeah, energy. I'm, I'm see, I'm huge on energy. Yeah, you know, and, and I pick up on energy, and and I think again, we spoke about just being able to kind of have that sixth sense in this business because there are a lot of snakes in this business so you got to keep your, ga your grass just low you know watch who you're doing business with and you know so a question I have about that is do you feel like overall the majority of the people you've encountered in the music industry do you think the more humbler ones are typically the little more successful ones or longevity wise or do you think there's always exceptions there's exceptions to every rule okay. um, you know I think the y y you wouldn't want to see these people that just go out and bite heads off being the successful ones but it almost seems sometimes like that's how it goes you know um, but I tend to kind of follow a different creed and so you know I think you can get far without stepping on people to get there you know but you have to be willing to put in the work mm. uh, you know a lot of people just want that instant I'm there yep. so they'll do whatever it takes mm. you know I'm not one of those people I never have been you know say something yeah. the mic. Humble will get you longevity. You can come in as a wolf, aggressive, shitting on everybody. You'll it's going to be short. Small. Yep. It ain't going to last long. Yep. yep. Popularity you'll get. 250,000 behind you as an artist, popularity you'll get. A million streams, popularity you'll get. Mm -hmm. Longevity, humble, loving your craft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Connecting That's with okay. people. Mm -hmm. Connecting with people is the most important thing mm -hmm. as born artists. Yeah. Period. I, I agree. That's awesome, bro. I yeah. love it. That just that just makes me feel so good because it, it, it makes me it reiterates to me that there are people who think like you guys in the industry. Yeah. yeah. That you can build relationships with instead of like because you know the past couple of years I, I feel like I was constantly meeting people that was like like overly cocky like really unapproachable right. even if they weren't really at a level yet just <laughs> you know what I'm saying like on the come up still yeah but it's like how like how do i connect with you you know so yeah you know you, you'll be able to tell and i think you you haven't you, you know you as long as you're grounded enough in yourself you, you're not really gonna allow like i don't allow too many people that i don't really vibe with around me yeah. you know and if i do it's just very short and, and i hope i don't got to deal with you beyond that you know and i won't if i don't have to you know but i also know how to be political sometimes you got to do business with people you don't like you yeah know? Mm -hmm. and, and as long as there's that separation of it and you know everybody understands their role that's okay you're not going to like all your bosses. You're not going to like everybody you have to deal with. But you do have to learn to be political. And, you know, I learned this the hard way in some cases, you know. Um, sometimes you just have to kind of bite your tongue and, you know, see where it takes you. As long as, you know, you don't allow it to affect too much of what you do, you're good. Gotcha. You know, these people can be jerk-offs all they want. Don't yeah. bother me, none. Yeah. Wow, man. Stoke. That That was, like, one of the hardest things for me to get over, man. Yeah. Like, and, and I'm still getting over it. Right. You know, it's like... I, I, growing up, I was a pretty small dude. I, I'm still a pretty small dude. And I, you, you know, and I've had, I've had a lot of smack talk to me and I've yeah. had a lot of trying to fit in and especially the little brother trying to prove myself. And we've talked in previous episodes, like I just always wanted to be cool with everybody. And if I, if I ever associated with someone, even if we weren't that tight, you know, I'd be on campus in, in 12th grade or whatever. And I'm like, Oh, did I make that guy feel bad? Oh, was I not cool? Oh, what were my skinny jeans not fitted? You know, you know, I'd be like, Oh, I have to, wear, I got to rock these vans. Like yeah. just, it was so like childish to, to look at that. And so now I've gotten a lot better at like when that, whatever you want to call it, anxiety, you know, insecurity, whatever, when that creeps up, I've gotten a lot better at just maintaining my confidence and exactly what you, bro, like when you, I was smiling right now, when you said that you were like, you know, do your thing, maintain yourself yeah. and, and just like, that's, that's all you could do. That's it. You can't you control know? the rest of these people. You know, that's mm. why I tell my, you, you can't control other people, even as a manager, you know, luckily you guys have a dynamic where he trusts you. Mm -hmm. If he didn't trust you, he wouldn't listen to shit you said. Yeah. So it's a trust. You got to have that trust. You got to be able to build rapport with people, mm -hmm. you know, and, and once you have that, you know, that's why they say trust is it's the hardest thing to get in the, you know, 
easiest thing to lose sometimes, you know, if, Crazy. You're, not, if wow. you're not respecting the trust and, and, and the team. Yeah, yeah. I think something that's just so huge for me, and uh, uh, when we're at that, that 25th anniversary yeah, thing, I'll dude, I, I got to connect you with our creative director, Stix. He's, just, he's such sure. a good dude, and yeah. we could all even hop on an episode or something like that, because I think you guys would really get along. He's so cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you going? Oh yeah, yeah. all right. My right, guy cool. goes with me everywhere. It's gonna be a good up? time. Let's go. <laughs> it's gonna be a good time. So he um he really drilled it into me. He's like, Jacob, confidence is facts. Everything, bro. Everything. And like He's intimidating too. Like he's a super nice guy, yeah, but yeah. he has the energy. Yeah, yeah. He, he's energy. like he's like you guys. Like you came yeah. in and I was like, the, the the confidence is crazy. The vibe is crazy, but you guys were so like humble, so right. cool, and I went a good vibe yeah and um and that's exactly how sticks is and and he helped me realize jacob just because you're confident doesn't mean you're cocky or conceited or selfish you can be confident and be, and be a modest guy yeah but you just gotta believe in yourself Boom. keep the promises that you make to yourself is a big thing that a, a quote from a guy named ed Milet, who we both follow yeah. keep the promises you make to yourself that builds confidence and like dude that that's been huge for me i feel like the, the phrase is stuck with me which tell me if you, you feel like it's a good phrase like have confidence to know who you are but always be a student Mm. Boom. When you were speaking that, I, I thought, you know, just never stop learning. Because when yeah. you stop learning, you're usually, hopefully, dead. You know? And, and, and that's when you should feel like you know it all. Yeah. yeah. When you're dead. Because, you know, even if you learn something as a master, I'm mm -hmm. sure in a few years, you know, look at computers. Those are new every year. Yeah. Sometimes twice a year. You know, always be learning, always be ready to learn because the world is ever changing and the world is not going to stop and wait for you to catch up. Wow. So you got to stay agile. You have to stay wanting to learn, you know, and, and that's not to say that, well, I don't know anything. You know, the reason I'm so confident is because I know I know what I know. Mm. Nobody can tell me that I haven't been in this music for all these years. You know, again, I, I had a situation today with a, 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 a guy who I know just doesn't have the experience in this industry mm -hmm. like I do. And so I'll kind of sit back and allow you to say, but, you know, there's things that I know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I know that I know that, you know, and it's not to be arrogant. It's mm -hmm. not to be it's just the truth. Cocky. It's just what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Can't argue facts. Yeah. That's you know? amazing, man. <laughs> that, that, that's amazing. Did you ever, um, was mentorship a big thing to you? Like, did you ever have anyone in the industry you looked up to or even, you know, family members or anything like that? You know, aside from, you know, an older brother that I kind of grew up with, I have a real big family. It was very spread out. My childhood was very probably different than most. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was one brother that, you know, I kind of leaned on heavily through my life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and once I kind of got separated from him and it's been a long time, you know, you kind of have to sit back like, okay, I'm out here on my own. Mm -hmm. You know, and that happened at a very young age mm -hmm. for me. And so... Um, I think that's really what pushed me kind of in these directions. You know, I, yeah. I say I grew up in the rough t roughest of times, which never made me afraid of, you know, taking these chances. Mm -hmm. um, some people, you know, are, they grew up different and they may not be willing to just sacrifice it all to go pursue a dream. Mm. And I get that, you know, but for me, it just was different. Wow. You know, it was crazy. Different. Yeah. I want to touch a little bit more on like shows and stuff like yeah. that. You know, um, what's kind of some... For, for all the upcoming artists and everything, what's, what's kind of the etiquette, you know? Do you like to get blasted with 20 emails from people? Hey, here's my press kit. Here's this. You know, what's kind of the, the line of like, hey, don't call the tour manager. Don't call Sean Healy. You know, here's the connect. Here's kind of the way of doing things. If you could give people like a little starting point, you know? You know, have all your ducks in a row. Be prepared. Okay. Be prepared. You know, create a, a one sheet that says, okay, this is, you know, this is what time I have my sound check. This is what mm -hmm. time I'm supposed to be there to be on. This is what time I'm supposed to be mm -hmm. on. You know, this is the people that are with me. Yeah. You know, just having all that outlined. Yeah. You know, this is my team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're a tour manager slash manager slash, you know, whatever else you may be in that, yeah. making sure that that person, you know, and that person making sure that they, they themselves, you know, just take the necessary steps to, to be prepared. Yeah. You know, just make sure you're, if you need to contact a tour manager, getting it done once, not having to make 30 calls. Mm. You know, yeah. um, if you have a question or you have some things that come up, make sure that, you know, you ask that in a way that you can get it answered and hopefully you don't have to call back and ask the same question. Yeah. Um, be on time, you know, be respectful. 
be humble. You know, I, I've dealt with a lot of guys who aren't at that level and they swear they are. And, you know, I get it. You got to kind of create that image. But that image is not being rude to mm -hmm. people. That's never going to really get you that far. I, I've, I've met plenty of artists over the years that were rude and automatic to me. And, and you know, again, I have to work in these environments. You know, yeah. I don't have to, but, you know, I'm there to help move this process yeah. along. And so if I'm dealing with rude people, it kind of makes me like, oh, well, you know, hopefully I ain't got to deal with them again. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of people forget that you're working your job, right? And they're working their job, and the the mysterious kind of like curtain of the music industry kind of blinds right. them. They're like, "Oh, it's music, bro. No, right. we gotta do it this way, whatever, whatever." And the biggest thing that I realized, I was like, "You gotta be professional." You know, True. I worked, um, I worked a couple different internship that, internships. I worked for Warner Music Group, and then oh, wow. prior to that, I worked for. I was the first marketing intern at a a fintech banking company, right? It was so funny. I was playing in a band at the time. I had my ponytail <laughs> and I would like shave a little bit before work. I'd walk in and I'd be like, okay, Jacob, professionalism, you know? And then when I got into the music industry, I started working for Warner, you know? I was like, oh, finally I can let loose and be right. cool. And then I realized, um, regardless of it's industry, business. yeah, if you want to make a million bucks, don't matter if you're working in financial technology, don't matter if, if you're working in marketing or music or whatever, it's a business nice. and there's professionalism yeah. and you know like the first time I went to a meeting at Warner like met up with some people I, I was trying to be all cool trying to be all slick you know and I was like oh they mean business <laughs> 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 and I was like okay okay so yeah I was like professional Jacob so you know I spent uh, a lot of years in my younger days working for lawyers and so oh I've okay you know, I've got a legal background to yes. this. And so, you know, I think I always say that taught me a lot about business and, and yeah. being able to negotiate in these boardrooms, you mm -hmm. know, but I also come from the streets. So, you know, you just kind of have that edge a little bit where, you know, I can go in here and handle business. People aren't going to just walk over me, yeah. you know, because I'm not that guy. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to be pro professional. I'm going to be respectful. Yeah. And if I got to tell you, you know, something, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to convey it in a way that you have to get it you know and sometimes i haven't always been so uh political but you know you live and learn <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what do, you do <laughs> you know you live and learn you make those mistakes and and you know i look back on those mistakes and i say man if only if i would have just kind of not did this that way you know but now i know the next time and i know what it looks like the next time yeah got you wow What's kind of your, your favorite part just about all this, just about music, about the hustle, you being an entrepreneur, like, is, you know, what's, what's that thing? The freedom, you know, and it's not even a real freedom, yeah. um, but it's the, you know, ability to get up every day, you yeah. know, at this point in my life and, and so much kind of do what I want to do, uh, yeah. you know, but it's still within reason. I, I have this kind of ventures that I've taken on and, you know, making sure that I dedicate myself to those and, and it being something that I want to do, not that I have to do. Wow. I think that's what it is. This is what I want to do. Yeah. You know, that's although awesome. I didn't realize it was what I wanted to do, it became what I wanted to do because it was a passion I had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about, because um, I feel like a lot of people, you know, if they get into the music industry, it's kind of like, oh, like it's more like laid back and chill. It's fun. It's a fun business it to is. be in. It's, it, and it is. It is. But... I personally kind of found that like just because it's fun and it's what you love to do, you're not going to love it every day. And a lot yeah. of times you're going to you're going to have to do things you don't want to do on a daily basis. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's the yeah. grind. Um, what, are your, what are kind of your thoughts on that? You know, I think that's what separates the people that want to do it from the people that want to do it. Yeah. You know, um, are you willing to get up every day and, and to, to put this, you know, work in? to uh, uh, an environment that most people will never see. You know, a lot of these people see these shows and these videos when they're all done. Mm -hmm. You know, we just shot a, a video recently with the Latin artists. And, and you know, again, um, it was a full production, you mm -hmm. know, a uh, couple different locations, you know, a lot of people and pieces involved, you know, a lot of from wardrobe people to makeup people to mm -hmm. hair people to videographers to caterers to mm -hmm. i mean a full production and again these are the things uh, that it takes yeah. Yeah. to get to that level now are you willing to do the work are you willing to pay the money because yeah. those things have costs you're not going to get a videographer to come out here and shoot a full production video just because yeah. yeah so do you have the capital enough to pay the right people to come do what you need them to do 
Mm. You know, wow. sometimes you can find some friends in it, and you know, luckily enough, you can kind of build that business. But hopefully, in the business, you realize it's a business, and you still yeah. got to find some of those elite pieces to help you kind of br- bring that vision to life. Mm. That's amazing. That's awesome. You know, kind of want to ask you just like some rapid fire stuff. Let's you know, go. just just quick, like <laughs> favorite beer, favorite drink, Crown and Coke. And Fair. that's that's an acquired because you know when I was younger I drank vodka but now I'm a crown guy. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Favorite place to eat, go to right now after this. Where are you gonna go? Uh, I like Italian food. Tommaso's is a great spot out here. What's it called? Tommaso's. If you've never been there, you have to go no. there. It's a beautiful Italian restaurant. Tommaso's. You know, Tommaso's. It's right off of like 32nd Street and Camelback in the Biltmore area. Okay. Great Italian food. Yeah. We're out of here Friday morning. I told him I was like tomorrow, tonight, whatever. Let's let's go yeah. somewhere cool so we we should try to go in there bro you should it's a great cool. if you love italian food see i love i'm italian i'm part italian and mm-hmm. so um i love italian food yeah. sweet favorite venue you've ever been to oh man I, you know I, I love the celebrity theater because i think the celebrity theater gives you kind of some intimate intimacy from you know an, an artist fan standpoint mm-hmm. no seat is further than 75 feet away so the stage rotates and so that's the one uh, in la right no it's actually here the celebrity theater wow, okay there's there's one it's, something it's a, like it's that. It's a rotating yeah. stage, and so like you know, and it's it's one of the ones I've probably spent a lot of time in. You know, I know we've been I've been to New York theaters, yeah. I've been to you know uh, Detroit, yeah. Connect, yeah. So I mean, I've been all over, but I think the intimacy from that and the way that people can connect with that artist and the way it just moves is so mm-hmm. it's right. That's mm-hmm. cool. The sound is great too. Yeah. Favorite thing about being a dad? Oh my god, I love my kids. You know, they keep me young. Wow. They keep me young. You know, they give me purpose. Yeah. Mind if I, if, if you don't mind putting on air, how, how old they are? So I have some older kids and I have some younger kids. Oh. My youngest son is, is two and, and I have, you know, kids that are 20. So wow. it's a spectrum thing. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You could probably give some good advice to my brother, man. He's, he's yeah. sitting in there right now with a bottle like, oh crap. Man. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's learned. You know, I don't think anybody could have told me how to be a father. Um, One thing I realized about parents is like, because as kids, we always just think like, they, they just all know. Like, they know what they're doing. They like, do. They don't. He's <laughs> like, yeah, no. I do, bro. <laughs> no, they don't. They figure it out, though, as you go. So, right? I, I have older kids. I have younger kids. And I have, I have you know, kind of one in the middle. And so, yeah. um, I, I think as you get older, you know, I'm not going to tell my age. Uh, but I think as you get older, you just start to understand what's important. Okay. You know, and, and the way I deal with my youngest son is very different now than how I dealt with my older kids gotcha. and I think that just comes with ex- with age comes experience and you know with that experience I think you really look at things differently I appreciate my younger son now just because of his youth and you know I know what it is now mm. back then I didn't I was just like oh kids what do you mean I don't want no kids you know I was trying to live my life mm-hmm. um, I mean you know now I am living my life mm-hmm. and, and so that is a big part of my life That's that crazy. is so cool man I have a, a really great mentor friend that i met in college he was my advisor and we just really hit it off and he's probably curtis he's mm-hmm. he's probably 60 something he? Yeah. and um he he worked in in the music industry helping he he basically helped pioneer a bunch of electronic technology for like instruments and worked with sony and did a bunch of stuff so he was able to provide like so much insight and it was, it was so funny he was like on like one of the last days of like the thing in class, he was like, all right, bro, any more questions? Because tomorrow I'm 200 an hour. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and so, but, he, but I asked him, I was like, you know, like what, what is life like for you? And he went, Jacob, you know, like I sold a lot of businesses. I did a lot of stuff. I'm 63, whatever. I got a nice condo. I, I own a business from home. I'm in my prime. Yeah. And I went, what? you're in your prime? <laughs> And I was like, I'm, t- you know, I was like 22 at the time. I was like, I'm sitting here trying to be a millionaire by the time I'm 25, bro. You know, like. <laughs> Nothing wrong like, with that either. Yeah, yeah. And, but I was like, why, how is he in his prime? Whatever. But like, as I've kind of gotten older, I've spoken to more people like you, more people in the industry who have provided great advice, insight, mentorship. I'm like that, that like really helped me kind of stop and take a step back and just realize like life is what I make it. All perspective, huh? Truth. Yeah. Life is, is what I make it. If I, if I want to sit here 24 years old right now and I want to act like everything's a shit show, that's how it's going to be. Yeah. But if I'm grateful and I'm like you and Curtis and Devin and everybody and like I, I stay grounded like that, you know, my day can be as good as I make it. Truth. And that's, yeah, that was something that like really stuck with me when, when he told me that and then what you said. Yeah, you know, I, I wish too. I would have learned that younger. I wish I, I could have understood it, you know, and, and even if I would have heard it, who knows if I would have understood it, you know, what mm-hmm. you hear and what you understand 
sometimes are different. And so, you know, I remember hearing a lot of things when I was younger, but I never understood it until I got, you know, older. And as I started to mature and see these things start to kind of happen, and you know, nobody, at 21, I knew everything, you know, only to get to 30 and start to realize, man, you really don't know anything. And then get beyond that, and you're like, you really yeah. didn't know <laughs> shit back then. Wow. You know? Yeah. I thought I did. I could have swore I knew everything. I could have yeah. swore that my, you know, I, I've experienced everything. And, and I had experienced a lot, but yeah. it wasn't even close to, you know, it's different levels. Mm. You know, I've seen different levels of life. And, and even now, you know, I'm, I'm kind of moving into this other level where, you know, I'm taking on a whole nother role. You mm -hmm. know, some of this kind of high level music management stuff. And, you know, it's just... It just takes shape kind of without sometimes you even realizing it. Mm -hmm. you wow. know? Last thing, one piece of advice, and Devin, you can weigh on this too if you want. One piece of advice for two 24-year-old guys <laughs> trying to make it out here, and you know a little bit about us and stuff, but what's it, music, life, whatever. What's, what's one piece of advice you want to give us? Man, keep your team strong. Hmm. And, uh, you, you know, keep your team strong and, and make sure that you guys always have each other's best interest at heart, but never give up. You know, these people are going to tell you, no, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have to trust you. Mm -hmm. You know what you're supposed to do. I, I feel like, you know, I think uh, that internal fire that burns in you and tells you, nah, I'm going to keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you said no, and I know you said I'm probably not going to make this, but I can't believe you. You know, just because you didn't make it in whatever goals you may have had, you're not going to tell me I can't reach mine. And I think wow. that's the difference you know because a lot of people didn't reach their goals and they became complacent in life i say it all the time you get these people that spend 20 years in these companies at the end they get this cool plaque you know maybe a watch and you know that's what they got and and they're cool with that and i'm cool with that mm. but that's not for me yeah that's just not for me yeah. crazy wow I would, I would say get, give him the mic oh yeah. let's take it real quick i would say definitely fall in love with the grind that yeah. stuff you were talking about earlier when you were like it could get frustrating or discouraging or things like this mm -hmm. those are the times where you really have to fall in love with it mm -hmm. you know what I mean the craft you have to just love the craft altruistically do anything you know whether it's good or bad and mm -hmm. then secondarily continue to build your value you guys were talking earlier about um, doing pay for play mm -hmm. I can't sell tickets you, I heard you say that mm -hmm. well if you have your value at a certain place you can sell tickets mm -hmm. so you shouldn't be trying to do a show if you fear that you, can, you can't sell tickets Wait till you can sell tickets. Yeah. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Exactly. Build your value. Make the venue demand you. Mm -hmm. Try mm -hmm. that for a change. Mm -hmm. And you'll get yourself, I guarantee, if you get your value to where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you, bro. Okay, I got to say one thing. Because <laughs> cause so, something that you said is, um, this, this was like a big thing for me. So me and Ryan, we've been best friends since kindergarten. In and out of friendship, but we've always known each other. Yeah. We reconnected. He was doing music. Yeah, here we are. So... Our families are good friends. We went on a trip one time. With everybody? No, no. I, w I oh, went with his family. I'm sorry. I went with his family. And someone that they know was kicking it with us. And, and, and he was cool. And, and um, we're like sitting there. I forgot. We, we were in, like at the river. We were somewhere. And um, he had a beer, a couple beers in. And I think that was to maybe help him get through some stuff. You know what I mean? But he said, he comes up, hey man, how you guys doing? Ryan, you still doing music? Oh wow, good for you guys. And it got real serious for a minute and he went, ah, man, oh, because Ryan said, Ryan said, oh, you still working for that company? He went, yeah, yeah, man. Tw it just passed 20 years and um, I don't know, man. I just, I got friends that backpacked through Europe. Boom. And, and I'm, I have chills talking about selling. Like, and he went, I got friends that have backpacked through Europe, man. Why the fuck haven't I done that? You know, man, I'm, I'm out here doing this, this, and that. I'm like getting emotional talking about it because, bro, like, and he said, hey, you guys, you keep going. Boom. You guys keep going. And, and, I, and like, literally, I went, thanks, bro. And I, like, walked away from you for a minute. And I honestly, like, I, I was tearing up a little bit because I just, and I'm getting chills, man, because I just, it made me so, like, sad. Right. Like, like, to know that he, like, but you know that was that was that his was choice. his thing, bro. That he, was his choice. You know, and, and again, other things take over. So yeah. He probably he might have got a family young. You know, I don't I don't know yeah. that situation. Who knows? And, and yeah. it could have been yeah. something completely different. But these are the Same. things that take over. You know, and and so, you know, where is your passion? What are you willing to sacrifice? Some people sacrifice, you know, having that family and and being. You know, I've sacrificed plenty of days and nights and and time away mm -hmm. from my family. You know, and it was something that I had to do mm -hmm. just because it's what. I had to do, you know, it doesn't mean I don't love my 
family. It doesn't mean I don't love my kids. It doesn't mean, you know, that um, I think less of any of that. I think that's a huge part, you Mm -hmm. know, and if you have it, you have to try and balance it and keep that grounded and keep your, you know, professional and work life grounded. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, sometimes that can help when you come off the road and, you know, you just got, you know, I'll tell you the the, the thing I love the most is my son just running up to me with like these open arms as crazy as he is. And and I'll tell you, I, there's nothing that makes me feel like that. And, and even if I've been on a grind, you know, dealing with some jerk offs, whatever, as soon as I'm I'm good, sometimes it's needed. That's awesome. That's cool, bro. Yeah, I always hear this phrase. Um, it's either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Like you choose. There it is. One. You do. You know. Yeah. So I always think about that too. You know, I, my guy here, he's he's kind of disciplined in a lot of ways that I'm not. You know, um, but it, it's you know, it's one of those things that you just you know what what are you willing to sacrifice? Mm-hmm. You know, um, and, and I think if if you know, it doesn't mean you have to completely shut things out, life out. You just have to really figure out where you want to go mm-hmm. and then work towards it every day yeah. what's, what's the saying i saw um let your job fuel your dream or let your job fund your dream until your dream can fund your freedom hmm. wow that's how i feel about it it's dope that's amazing you know yeah and i think that's the icing on the cake right there yeah man. that was good hey. that was good bro Hey man, we appreciate everybody listening. This was episode forty-eight. Hey. Do you want to give out your Instagram or anything? Yeah, or? Uh, Tony underscore UNIQ. Uh, you can find me uh, there, and that's really I don't really keep too much social media, but yeah. IG is you good TikTok enough. You want to shout out? Right I, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know if I would. I mean, I see a lot of people on TikTok. Yeah. It's just I, I ain't caught when I'm too busy. I'm yeah. way too busy. So gotcha. yeah, at Tony underscore UNIQ. Cool. Dang. You guys heard it here. That was such a good episode, man. Uh, at Ryan Ramirez official, at J A C X B M O O R E. Connect with us on Instagram. Say what's up. And, bro, thank, thank you, you, Tony. Thank you, you guys for having you, me. Man. Oh, oh, shit. Sorry. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. All right, guys. Peace. I'm trying to decide when you look in your eyes. Yeah.